Sandwiched between sublime planet hopping and absurdist delights, Mario's Wii U outings are very much the black sheep, or perhaps colourful cats, of the franchise. They're getting another shot at the limelight, however. First, New Super Mario Bros. U returned in a deluxe 2019 re-release, and now it's Super Mario 3D World's turn. And better still, the already decent-sized Wii U adventure is bolstered by an entirely new outing, Bowser's Fury. Both games certainly have their moments, and Bowser's Fury in particular has a pretty interesting central hook, but by the time I was finished, I still had an itch that Mario's cat suit didn't quite scratch. Back in 2013, IGN's reviewer praised Super Mario 3D World for being a joy to play, both in single player and with friends. Many of the points made in that review very much still stand, in particular the fact that each level is typically built around a unique gameplay twist, so players are always tackling new challenges. Each concept is gratifyingly simple too. Jump to flip panels. Silhouettes aren't what they seem. Create your own path. Bounce to victory. Let the music guide you. The more Mario's the merrier. Invisible paths. And try this one on for size. Super Mario Cat. I mean, cart. No, I mean, cat. Look, either is fine. Point is, it remains a great deal of fun discovering what's around the next corner, or perhaps more accurately, what's in the next box. Many of these are micro-challenges, single room set pieces that are one and done. Or in the case of the mystery houses, a series of seconds long vignettes that you have to complete without messing up. They're kind of like Mario wear, but with less snot sniffing and nose picking. The visual design also still stands strong. The environments are wonderfully vibrant, from the way shrubs and flowers bop along to the jaunty melodies that are apparently piped into each area, through to the impressive amount of variety between worlds. While there's the odd animation I am not a fan of, the cat suits in particular are incredibly well realised, whether you're swiping, <coughs> pouncing, diving, frantically scrabbling up a wall, then sliding back, or simply padding along. Becoming a cat is integral to the gameplay too, as it gives players new options for navigating the diorama-like levels, essentially reinventing each play space. As a cat, you can scale walls to find alternate paths or reveal secrets, and this is much more of a game changer than the other suits. Some of the other power-ups fill similar roles, giving you a new perspective on the world. That said, playing Super Mario 3D World again now, the gameplay actually feels like a bit of an awkward fit for the presentation, as the forced viewpoint makes spatial awareness harder to judge than it would be in a purely 2D design or in a 3D game with full camera control. As such, 3D World doesn't feel as intuitively precise as other Mario games. Oh. This feeling is compounded when you throw additional players into the mix. With up to four people, the result is chaotic and fun, but also haphazard, as many of the levels and challenges simply don't work that well with four people running around. Multiplayer is a mixed bag in other ways too. The core of the experience is meant to be a push and pull between cooperation and competition. On one hand, you're working together to get to the end of the stage, but on the other, you're also fighting to get the most points and win the crown. This tension can be fantastic. One minute, I'd leave a power-up for a friend to help them out. The next, I'd pick them up and try and toss them off the map. Where it fails is when the shared pool of lives runs out and prematurely ends the fun, or when it becomes clear that the scoring system weights certain actions far too heavily. That's right. The differences between characters is generally more of a negative than a positive too. Toad, for instance, is fast but can't jump very high, while Luigi has a huge jump but skids to a stop. Both ability sets can be useful in specific places, but a character like Rosalina is just broadly better. I mean, she has a spin attack and she can basically double jump. This uneven playing field seems at odds with multiplayer's competitive aspirations. <laughs> Playing with friends is still fun for a change of pace, but 3D World feels more like a game designed for one or possibly two players. I mostly played it solo and largely stuck with old reliable Mario, then Rosalina once I'd unlocked her. There isn't a great deal of impetus to use the other characters beyond curiosity and obtaining the occasional character specific stamp. Speaking of the stamp system, it's been integrated with 3D World's new snapshot mode, which lets you pull up a camera style interface, then zoom, pan, and switch filters to get your shot just right. It's a great concept, but works significantly better in Bowser's Fury, where you can more easily frame a scene. 
Snapshot mode is a good addition, but I would have liked to see Nintendo make some quality of life changes too. Remember the assist mode in Super Mario Odyssey? 3D World has an invincible super leaf, but this only protects players from enemies, not from falling to death, which is a massive hurdle for some. A change to this would have been great for beginners and made a huge difference to multiplayer too. As it stands, Super Mario 3D World has lost some of its luster. I don't think it fully succeeds as either a single player or multiplayer game, and while I enjoyed rediscovering its mini gameplay twists, it's simply less compelling than the likes of Galaxy or Odyssey. <laughs> So that's one half of the package. The other is Bowser's Fury, a whole new, much more contemporary feeling adventure. Gone is the concept of lives and the fixed perspective replaced by an open world with full camera control. The other playable characters have also been jettisoned, but Mario is joined by Bowser Jr. and together they're trying to save the new setting of Lake Lapcat from a malevolent black goop that has taken hold of the Koopa King. <laughs> no, not that black goop. This black goop. The most significant mechanic tied to this setup is that every few minutes Bowser explodes with fury, sending the world into an apocalyptic storm in which glowing blocks drop from the sky and his towering form breathes, sweeping jets of fire, decimating anything in their path. This rage state will subside in a few minutes, but can also be overcome by directly confronting Bowser or by reaching a cat shine, the game's main collectible. Most of these are found at the lighthouses dotted about the world. After the lake reverts to sunshine and blue skies, Bowser settles back down into the muck, but soon begins to slowly rise up, giving you a visual indication of how close he is to unleashing his fury once again. It's an interesting mechanic given that we're accustomed to open worlds that largely let us set our own pace and agenda. Here, however, Bowser's fury is unleashed so regularly that you have to be ready to deal with it at almost any time. It's not always welcome, but can be used to your advantage. These blocks can only be destroyed by Bowser's fire breath, for instance while platforming challenges are sometimes more straightforward in the midst of the maelstrom. It's quite cool seeing how the world is reinvented when Bowser blows his top. That said, I did get a little tired of the constant interruptions, and if you're not within easy reach of a shine, it quickly becomes apparent that fighting Bowser is an extremely repetitive way to restore the world. This battle is heavy on Godzilla vibes, but extremely light on excitement and gameplay. It doesn't evolve much over the course of the adventure either. Each lighthouse on Lake Lapcat plays host to five shines, and the layout around each location changes depending on the shine you're gunning for. It's a familiar system, but a good way to pack more gameplay into a small area. That said, the moment-to-moment -moment play contains few real surprises, as you'll be using the same power-ups and suits from 3D World, and a number of challenge types are repeated across the archipelago. Getting around is good fun, however, thanks to Plessy, who's also made the journey between games, and will be waiting for you basically anywhere there's water, which is everywhere. I also love the fact that you can stockpile power-ups. It's hard to overstate just how player-friendly it is to have a power-up caddy on hand. I enjoyed my time with Bowser's Fury, but it ultimately doesn't feel that essential. This is a Mario title driven more by gimmicks than gameplay. There's no better example of this than the fact that almost every single creature, enemy, and object in Lake Lapcat is a bizarre Chimera. Or should I say, Catmera. Kai Meower? Whatever. That piranha plant? Cat. That bullet bill, also a cat. Those cats, pretty sure they used to be dogs. Those bushes, those trees, that lighthouse, seriously, cats? It's all extremely silly, and I'll be the first to admit that it does give the game a fun flavor, but it doesn't add anything in terms of gameplay, and that's surprising. The best Mario games take their goofy ideas and tie them into core mechanics that directly impact puzzles and platforming. Here, it's largely window dressing. Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury packs a ton of engaging gameplay, but neither component comes together quite as elegantly as it might have done. This is a solid option if you're craving more Super Mario for your Switch, but it's not the mustachioed must-play I was hoping for. For more reviews from the team down under, check out IGN's verdicts on Little Nightmares 2 and The Medium, and for everything else, stick with IGN.